Brian. Okay. Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. I've done the job with you because I'm there. Okay. Um, that's right. Um, I've got a few questions to ask about accessibility from a gadget perspective, if that's all right. Okay. Um, the big fan of gadgets, I really love what you do and... Better still, it isn't just about the boys. Because <laughs> that's the little always gets it's always about boys and the toys. Yeah, I hate that yeah. phrase. So, yeah, so that's all right. I've just got a couple of very quick questions. Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, okay. I, I really wish I had a longer tripod I could just <laughs> not work with. Um, but, um, so it's really nice to meet you. Um, a couple of questions. For you, the, the first one is with your extensive knowledge of gadgets, are there any you think we should know about and profile on Pesky People website? Um, gosh, do you mean specifically aimed at the disability market or it'd be a mixture? Gadgets? Mixture because a lot of disabled people have like the same gadgets yes. as everybody else. Um, I think is there anything that stands out for you? Well, obviously, everybody's talking about 3D uh, this year. It started mm -hmm. in January, and it's continuing. We have a lot of 3D technology here at the Gadget Show, which I, I'm kind of mixed about. I think it's good for some movies and some sports and some gaming. But in terms of watching all television, then, you know, I, I don't think it's going to catch on in that way. So 3D is very exciting this year. Um, the other thing that everybody's talking about, of course, is uh, Apple's iPad. Now, this yeah. could be quite interesting, I think, because if, um, if you sort of find it tricky to uh, use an iPhone, because, I mean, I'm always making mistakes with texts. I think the touchpad is still a little bit tricky. With the iPad, hopefully, you know, this could be um, a different experience to use. I haven't played with it yet, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited, so that's definitely something to think about. That, that's fine, thank you. Um, on, on that, on the thing you said, because you've just said about um, what's exciting for this year, what do you think the future holds for us for the next generation of technology? Um, I think the next generation, so what we're talking about the next sort of 10 years, mm. really. I think we'll see a big difference on consumer levels in our homes. I think that they will become more automated, not to a ridiculous degree because I don't see a paperless society happening in the next 10 years, but I definitely think that RFIDs will be used in the home. So, for example, uh, you'll run out of uh, something in the fridge and it will automatically be reordered for you and then delivered to your house and maybe put in a drop box that's refrigerated. You know, so I think things will come along that will make our lives easier and I think um, also gadgets will converge more um, so we will need more power, more broadband width and um, people will just, I think generally just be more I think, with technology and it won't be such um, what's the word. A lot of people I think are still afraid of technology and I think it will become more embraced and because the new generation are now you know, being spoon fed, it's just going to be part of, uh, of their daily life. So it's interesting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I've um, got one last question for you. Um, I know that you're involved in two disability charities, um, Wolverhampton. I know you're involved in the Disabled Bikers yeah. Organisation and one to do with WISH. I'm going to say this really wrong, I'm sorry. Um, to do with, for looking after and supporting disabled children and their families. Yeah. So I, I know that you've got more sense on disability and access than the average person um, does. Yeah. Um, so, so I wondered, the question is whether you, do you think, would it be possible that you would take up pesky people's challenge to explore and feature accessible or useful gadgets for deaf or disabled people on the gadget show? Would I take it to what's the challenge, sorry? To, to, to include accessible 
and creative gadgets for disabled and deaf people on the gadget show. That would be good. That would be really interesting. Um, it would be better than getting covered in water and sliding down into a tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that is. Exactly. I will, I will put that forward to the producers. We have talked about it before and sadly so far it hasn't made it onto the show. But it's something that they are aware of. I, as you say, am personally um, more than aware of. I'm involved with a couple of charities. Um, one was the, the biking charity, obviously, because I'm a motorcycle journalist and I do see a lot of people have after bike accidents and, and yeah. you know, have to suffer a disability in that way. Um, have some friends, have a lot of friends on Twitter actually that are disabled, so they're all coming here, which is going to be great fun. And yes, I work for Promise Dreams as well, which is a Wolverhampton based children's charity. And um, we try to um, raise money to, to basically you know, make children's dreams come true. And it can be something small or it can be something ongoing if they have a disability. So um, I will be inviting to get something on the show for you guys. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Susie, right, for really your nice time. To meet you. Thank you. Multitasking. Very good multitasking. Yeah, glad you want to take and hold at the same time. It's too small. <laughs> Thanks so much, Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try. Yeah. Typical. I know, it was higher than I thought. I went the same thing. You're all right. You're all right. You feel better. I thought I was at that level. Oh, that was extreme. At least you know you bounced. You got back up. That's okay. I thought I'd fun times that I just went. I thought I was done there. I was stupid.